All right, so I got the uh, pressure pump, or excuse me, the pressure tank in the uh, 99 Bigfoot. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the reason I wanted to put one in is, well, it didn't have one. All it has is a pressure pump. Um, and whenever you'd kick the water on, it just runs continuously until you shut the water off. And uh, if you use water sparingly like I do and intend to more often, it makes it very, very difficult to uh, um, to try to make your pump last because it's always cycling on and off, on and off, on and off. And it can't be very efficient as far as you know, even electrical consumption, um, let alone how it's going to wear the pump out. So, uh, so anyway, so I, I bought this tank here. Um, I think it's nominal capacity, like four and a half, five gallons. But uh, you know, with the bladder and some pressure in it, it might hold up to like 2.8. Um, right now, it holds about three and a half quarts until the pump kicks on. Um, if I shut the pump off, which it is right now, um, I got you know plenty of water. Um, and it will spit out about, I think it was about nine quarts. Um, so, uh, so for whatever reason, I didn't have power or something. I still have a fair amount of water, enough to brush my teeth and, you know, not take a shower. Well, I don't know. I could probably almost take a shower at that too, with a navy shower. But anyway, um, so the installation. I ended up using some of these um, uh, push together fittings. Uh, never tried those before. Um, I'm pretty happy with them. Um, I found out, you know, you really don't want much of a bind on them. Uh, it, can, it can cause some some trouble, which I I had whenever I uh, strapped in this line after I was done. It took put a little pressure on uh, some of these fittings up here on the tank itself, and had a little bit of a leak. But um, I've since actually altered that and uh, fixed it up, and uh, I'm pretty pretty happy with it. Um, the fittings that these that the motorhome is built with are these right here. They they have a um, um, uh, a barb. Uh, you, you slide the um, the nut on the pipe, and then you push the, the pipe onto the barb, and then tighten it down. And uh, as far as I can tell, they're pretty well foolproof, but they are a pain to work with. If you want to take something apart, um, you pretty well mangle up the pipe with some, some pliers, getting the, getting the line off. And then you're going to trim it down and hope that you have enough, which in many cases I didn't, which is why I like that line going to the water heater. I had to modify that. Um, and put in my own piece of uh, piece of PEX. Uh, I chose the blue. I could have gotten the, this translucent uh, flex PEX, but uh, I chose the blue because as I change things out and build things, I'm going to do the blue for cold and red for hot. Um, so anyway, just as far as the system goes, um, uh, this right here is the fill. Comes out of the wall up there for the tank. Um, this is the vent. For filling um, this is the pressured side of the pump originally it just ran to the uh, water heater underneath the bench there um, and then on through the system up to the uh, kitchen sink which I'm below right now um, on to uh, the outside spigot uh, into the floor over there and then over to the uh, the bathroom where it splits off um, <clears throat> what I really would like to do or what I felt I needed to do was Put the uh, pressure tank directly after the pump, um, which is the way you typically typically install something like this. Now, being that the pump comes up into the middle of the floor here, I didn't want to put a pressure tank right over here. Uh, I wanted to put it up there in some poorly used space, um, so I strapped it up in place. I was going to make kind of a cradle for it um, out of wood, and then I decided just to use uh, four pieces of strap. Uh, I think it's well secured. Um, if I don't feel comfortable about it someday, I'll take it down and I'll build a wooden cradle. Um, but um, the easy, really easy way to do it would have been just to splice it in anywhere like it was another um, faucet. And it would have done the trick as far as um, adding some capacity to the system um, and, uh, and keeping the pump from kicking on all the time. The problem with doing that, just putting it in the middle like that, like I said, after the water heater, after the sink, and then between that and the bathroom, would have been that whenever the pump is not on, uh, water could be flowing in the opposite direction than it normally does when the pump's on. Um, and then when the pump notices a pressure drop and kicks on, uh, the water changes direction. And um, I don't think that's a good idea um, for a number of reasons. But anyway, um, so I ended up just um, re-diverting water up over into the pressure tank 
and then it supplies pretty much in the middle of the system rather than closest to the water heater. I'd like it to be closer to the water heater, but that's that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Um, up there is a, that blue knob, there's a valve, so I can shut off the whole system. If there's a leak anywhere, I can kill it, because before you could just kill the water pump and it would shut off the water supply, but now with the pressure tank, there's a, you know two gallons or something of water that's gonna keep on spitting out, so it needed a shut off. Shut offs are a good idea. Um, as far as the uh, operation or the actual you know results of all this, uh, it seems to kick on at about three, three or four quarts of water, um, which is probably half of the capacity in there. Um, and so that's kind of a problem. I, I'd like it to kick on more towards the end of the capacity once the tank's almost empty. But I don't, I don't know if I have any differential control on the pump. I don't have good access to it right now. Uh, there is a pressure control, I believe, on it but I don't have access to that either. So that, that's gonna change. And if the pump doesn't suit my needs, um, I will put something in, put a pressure switch or something that has a cut in and cut out. Um, but uh, overall, it's, it's pretty good success. I haven't taken a shower or anything with it. Not that I expect to notice anything other than, than um, you know, the pump kicking on and off less often, running for longer periods of time. So, um, so yeah, so it seems to be working out pretty well. Um, the, uh, the next thing is I ordered some water flow meters. Um, um, they are analog. Uh, I was almost bought digital ones that had a little digital meter that you could, you could mount in, the, uh, in a panel somewhere, maybe up here on the wall, which is where I'd kind of prefer it uh, when you walk in, and uh, keep track of my water consumption, and then put an additional one on the hot water, so I know how much hot water I'm using. Um, but uh, the ones that I looked at consume as much as an amp, <laughs> and I can't really have that. Uh, it seems ridiculous just to have it counting. So I went ahead and I found one, a uh, nice one uh, by a company I think called B-Meter or something. It's made in Italy. Um, so I have two of those coming, one for hot and one for cold. Um, so whenever those come, I'm going to install that probably right after that, uh, that valve there. And uh, then I'll notice my water consumption. Uh, in addition, there is a, um, this is the pressured line coming in. If you just are uh, at a park or something and you just want to have a hose hooked up and you use the, you know, park's pressure, um, it was spliced in here. Right now I, I have it detached because I'm planning on mostly using the pump, but I do want to hook that back up whenever, uh, you know, you might need it or the pump quits or something. Um, uh, but this fitting here, which I think might be either a check valve or a um, uh, pressure reducing valve, whatever it is, it's a cheap little thing. I'd like to put something in that's maybe adjustable or something with a pressure gauge. I need a pressure gauge in the system somewhere. But um, whenever I get in here to do my modifications for um, the, the flow meter, um, I will figure out what I'm going to do with that. Um, but for now, um, it seems to be working pretty well. I didn't have much fun working in this space down here, but it's better than it could be. So, um, yeah, till next time.